Hello, and thanks for joining me today as we go over this tutorial on how to build a dual button door with an audio and visual alarm and status indicator for your display. This will be another sequential build where we start with a dual button design and expand on it. Timestamps are in the description for quick reference. Okay, so I've got a mock door set up here. You'll see I have a microcontroller here, my door on the outside, my door on the inside, and it closes and it opens. And on the inside, it closes and opens. All right. And we'll go into the microcontroller and I'll show you how it's done. All right, so we're in the microcontroller. We have three nodes here. We have an on-off input from the rear button, which is on the outside of the vehicle. We have an on-off input from the cockpit area, which is on the inside of the vehicle. Then we have our number output, which is gonna go output to the hinge, or hinges if you have multiple. This is basically gonna be the number value for the rotation to the hinge. We're gonna to go to the logic editor and you'll see we have the two inputs and the one output. In order to tie these together, we have to do an or. So it's gonna be this button or that button and they're gonna tie into a numerical switch box. This is gonna go into that. But the numerical switch box here doesn't have a value to pass. We're gonna create one value for the close and one value for the open. We can actually move these down and I know my closed value is gonna be one. And I'll connect that. Your open value is gonna vary depending on the height of your hinges from the ground and just the general placement of your hinges. I know mine is gonna be negative 0.36. And we'll go ahead and connect that. And so now we have input goes to either of these, which turns this on, which passes these values to the output. You can see that I've connected the microcontroller to the door switch and to the cockpit switch. And then I've had the output going to both hinges. I made sure that I have power. And if you click on these, I've set them to half. I think it's a little slower if you do a, a fourth, but uh, I'm gonna do one to two. I'm gonna do a speed at one with max power. So it, I don't want them to close too fast. You can have them close fast if you like. I just like them to close a little slower because it adds to the effect. And now you have a working door, closes, opens, closes, opens, and you're good to go. We're gonna add a single RGB light to this as an indicator in the cockpit. Now what this light will do is it'll be red while the door is moving in motion, and it'll turn green when it is closed. And if the door is all the way open, we're gonna go with yellow because it's like Eh, be cautious, but it's not really a big deal. And for that, we're gonna go into the microcontroller again. All right, we're in the microcontroller editor and we'll go ahead and add, we're gonna add two nodes. So we're just gonna widen this up a little bit. we are add one, that's gonna be the number input. It's gonna be input from hinges because the hinges are gonna pass the data to this. And we're gonna add a composite output and we're going to say out, whoop, output to RGB lights. Now we'll move these over. We'll go into the logic editor. All right, you'll see we have our output for our composite RGB light and we have our input. Let's move these down and out of the way because the first thing we want to do is we want to make these columns. And this is very similar if you watch my low fuel light tutorial where we did a red, yellow, green. We're going to build some columns here. So at the top of the column, we want our RGB values, right? So we're going to have to feed them a value. So we need one for red, one for green, one for blue. And then we're going to pass it to a right composite with three channels for R, G, and B. Move that down. And then we're gonna go into a switch box. It's gonna go into here. And then we're going to do a threshold. Now what you can do is you can just duplicate this, copy, paste, and paste one more. All right, that should do it. 
and we'll configure these for a different color, each for a different color. So we'll take the output and we'll put it over here and we have the input. So the order of business here is the, it goes from the input to the threshold, right? And the threshold to the composite switch box, which is basically going to pass the data to the next column. But it, again, it needs the data to pass. So what we want to do is we want to start with, since red is in motion and yellow is all the way open, we're going to start with yellow and then we're going to work backwards to the end motion. So then we'll do the red and then we're going to stop with the green at, at the last where it's closed. So we're going to start with this column here is going to be yellow. So what makes yellow, right? Red and green. And we can leave blue empty. And so we'll tie these in, red, green, and we can tie it in. That way you can edit to whatever colors you want later. And all you have to do is change the numbers there. And we'll take this guy here, which is the modified composite signal, and we will just feed it right into there. And then you can just daisy chain that right into this guy, the off, and we'll do that for each of these. So we'll take the input here, we'll feed it into this guy, we'll feed it into this guy, and we can just do these. This is going to be red, so the first value of one, and then this is going to be green, so we'll do one there. Red, green, blue, right? So we'll feed these in, red, green, blue. Then you want to take this value here, pass it to the switch box. This value here, pass it to the switch box. We'll daisy chain that into that. We'll daisy chain that right into the output. And that's all there is to it, except we have to configure our thresholds. So we'll go ahead and connect our thresholds and then we'll configure them. So we want the lowest threshold, which is going to be yellow, while it is open, right? So I'm going to do negative 0.09 to negative point zero eight five. Now these are going to be different for you as the height is different for you with negative zero point four whoop negative and then point two four. So this is going to be the whole range here for the green or the red well, it's from open to close. And then we'll do 0 0.24 to 0.25. That way it's, I mean, pretty much when it's closed or yeah, closed, it'll be green. Okay. So we'll go ahead and save that. And we'll run it. All right. So there we have it. We have a yellow light because our door is open. If we run in, and press the button, turns red, then it turns green when it's closed. Okay, for our next order of business, we're gonna add a flashing light while it's closing. So the red light is gonna flash while it's closing or opening. And then we're gonna add an audio alarm to that. Okay, so I've added a buzzer here and a buzzer here so that we can hear it if we're on the outside and on the inside. I've also made sure that both of these have power and we'll go ahead and edit our microcontroller. All right, so we're going to add one more node. And we're just going to make it an on-off output. And we'll say audio out. Make sure we got room for it there. Go into the logic editor here. Let's pull it over where this guy's at. And then we're going to add a blinker, OK? And we want to add it to this column here because this is our red and this is while it's moving, right? So I'm going to move this down. We can put the blinker there. And we're going to go ahead and tie the threshold into the blinker and the blinker into that. It's working its way up, right? And we can take the blinker itself, just like we did before, and we can just add it to the audio. Now you can put this down here if you want so it's easier to look at, but that should do it. So let's save it. All right, and we're just going to make sure that our buzzers are connected to our audio out. 
and then we'll save it. All right, so everything still works. We've got a yellow light. Go ahead and smack this button here. I did turn down the speed of these to 0 0.2, and uh, I turned the ratio to 1 to 4, just so I can get them to move a little bit slower, but we'll see here. And then once it hits green, it stops, because green doesn't have a blink. Just like that. Now, this is a great time to find out how good your thresholds are, because if your threshold is too broad for the open or for the close, um, your alarm and your light won't start blinking for a good you know a second or two after the doors already started moving so this is a good time to tighten those thresholds up okay so the next part of the tutorial we are going to add a display with a lua script that's going to tell us in a colored font that matches the rgb light what the door is doing whether it is open whether it is closed or whether it is in motion all right, so I've added a display here. I've moved my speaker up and added another one and then got rid of the RGB light and just put an indicator in there. This is just for aesthetics. You can do it however you want. Um, just be sure that you make sure you have electricity and you have a data uh, on for your display. Uh, I just put mine as from a constant on over there. So that way I know it's always on for testing purposes. Uh, the composite uh, is you know, we're not going to use that for the display and you're going to need a video, but we don't have anything to tie that into. So we'll get into that next. All right. We are in the microcontroller editor. We'll go ahead and add another node, but we're going to have to make room for it. So we'll go ahead and add a length there, add our node. This is going to be a video output. We'll just say output to display. And I'll make sure it's not overlapping. Then while we're in here, we have our output to display. We're going to add a composite write number. And we're going to add a Lua script. Now this guy here, the input from the hinges that feeds all the other colors, is also going to feed this composite write, which is in turn going to go to the Lua. And the video from that is going to go to the output. All right, so the first thing we're going to do is we're going to delete all these notes. Okay, notes are deleted. Let's go ahead and get rid of this output set number. And we're going to get rid of this draw circle here. We're going to change the set color here to zero. And then we'll do a screen draw clear to clear the screen. If you don't remember what that does, that does this. Clears the screen with the current color which is black, give ourselves a couple extra lines here, and then we will start our code. So the first thing that we wanted to do is we want to set the color to white, and then we will draw the text. And we're going to draw it three in from the left and then three down. And we're just going to say door. And then we're going to give ourselves some if and else if and else statements, right? So we're going to do a couple extra lines. We're going to do an if. And we're about to give a value here of, let's call it state. And we can go up here and we can specify that value with the state. So the input that's given from the hinges is going to be stored as state value. So it's going to be a numerical value. And we're going to say if state is greater than or equal to 0.24, which is around our closed state, that's the rotation when we're closed, then and we're going to end in a little bit here so we can keep track of our code nice and cleanly. Screen, set color, and we're going to set the color to uh, green. 
and we're going to screen draw text and we're going to say three now we're going to do 27 in the way that you can calculate this is that we know that each letter here is four right so that's four times four which is 16 plus the spaces in between 17 18 19 20 and actually if we did this we know there's actually a two pixel gap in between the colon and the last letter so that's 21 then you have 22 and so 22 plus 3 equals 25 and then we'll give ourselves a two pixel gap so i think 27 is a good starting point and then we'll do three and then we'll just do closed And we can take this here and we can copy it so we don't have to keep typing it every time. And then we can do a couple lines. Else if state is greater or equal to, whoops. And we're going to do um, the in motion, which started at about negative 0 0.084, if I remember right. And we will then, and we'll just paste that in. We'll change these colors here because we want it to be red while it's flashing, right? So 255, zero, that's your red. And we want to say in motion. And again, we're just going to do a couple line breaks. I want to do else, and you don't need to set anything like this for it because it's just gonna it's gonna be the last thing it's gonna fall back to this so then we can tab in we can paste that that in and we can do so this is gonna be when it's open right so red plus green is yellow and then we'll do open and that should be all you need minus you have to close this out the else if statement has to be closed out so that should be good to go all right, here we have it. We have our button. It says it's open. It is open. Let's see what happens. It is in motion. It is moving. It's flashing. Now it's closed. Fantastic. As always, thanks for joining me. If you liked the video, please smack the like button. And if you care to see more of my videos, please subscribe. See you next time.